Court issues an absolute order preventing meetings and demonstrations that obstruct public activities in Colombo. Tear gas fired at university students who defied court order. Minister of Finance clears his stance on the actions of the Auditor General. Kumar Gunavatnam granted Sri Lankan citizenship. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News. I'm Sandra Ferdinando. And I'm Azra Hassan. Let's now take a look at the stories in detail. <music> President Maitripala Sirisena presided over the Gold District Maternal Health Association conference this morning. The conference was held at the Siri Dhamma Vidyale in Labudua and members of the association were presented with uniforms. The school is the safest place for a child other than the home. The child is protected for five hours a day at the school. But the most dangerous time for the children is the time when their parents are relaxing and not the time they are in school. The reason is because both parents are facing the competitive society. In the midst of the economic difficulties, they live a fast-paced life in order to achieve what they require and en route forget about their children. This has attributed to a situation where the duties and responsibilities towards the child are forgotten. Therefore, there is less commitment from the parents towards the child's protection in society today. President Maitri Palasiri Sena declared open the ward complex building and dental operations theatre at the National Institute for Non-Communicable Diseases. The ward complex building was sponsored by the Sri Lanka Army and is equipped to provide treatment to persons with dengue. The president registered the first patient into the ward complex and also engaged in a cordial discussion with the patients. Police fired tear gas and ward cannons to disperse a protest staged by the Medical Faculty Student Activist Committee in Kerm today who were defying court orders. The students who commenced their protest march from opposite the Colombo Medical Faculty in opposition to the order issued by the Court of Appeal on the Saitam Private Medical College were dispersed as they attempted to approach the President's office. Colombo Additional Magistrate issued an order absolute against the Medical Faculty Student Activists Committee, preventing them from holding meetings and protests which cause public inconvenience. Presenting facts to court, the police said that staging protests could create a problematic situation due to the Independence Day rehearsals. Thereby, the Fourth Magistrate Court issued an order preventing any rallies, protests or meetings which causes a hindrance to the public and vehicular movement. While the protests, which were staged defying the court order, caused heavy traffic congestion in and around the Colombo Fort area, many were seen suffering the consequences. It is always the general public who gets involved in this, not anyone else. 
Vina kaurut ni mai. Where the general public falls under a lot of stress because of this issue. How so? Where Ella people leave work in the evening with the intention of getting back home. Instead, they spend hours in traffic in discomfort. Ana trapi kegi. Mega usah bi. Even the code order has been defied. They always protest like this. They always block the roads, hampering our travel time. Kegi, amanda makoi belet tiya na. Tiap malam ada ni main ni ni dah. We continue to suffer because the law is not being implemented and respected. There is no point talking about it. They should be treated with batons. Here are the views expressed at two separate media briefings today on the Auditor General. We make a request under Clause 43.2. And when it is written under this clause, it is not for the entire world to see. It is something which should be sent to me. So if it has been published to an outside party before coming to me, shouldn't I be the one who should be asking the questions? If not, people would think that I published it. So what does the summary say when this question is answered? I am shocked. I do not like to discuss this any further because he is not here at the moment. I will arrange an opportunity to rectify this while he is present. <laughs> It is not the honesty. I only question the procedure. We will see about where he is answerable to. I do not have to answer that here. It is understood if you say it, so you do not have to repeat the question. Yeah. We will give answers at the correct time, and this isn't the correct time. He answers to Parliament, so if either Sudarshani or I request for information, he does not have the right to do so. That is where he went wrong. I do not know, but why would he answer in the first place? We will clearly protect the Auditor General. I admit that he is a person who works impartially. The Finance Minister is asking for something, and as far as I am concerned, he does not have that right. So when the Auditor General is requested for something, he will give it, and the moment he does, since it is not a secret anymore, he uploads it to the web. The Right Information Act has been passed now. This will enable any state official to upload information to the web. If not, why did we pass the Right Information Act? <laughs> Minister of Finance Ravi Karanayaka says that a final decision has not been reached on an investor for Sri Lankan Airlines. The minister made this statement during a media briefing held today. Various statements are being made about Sri Lankan Airlines. However, as the government, we can state that we have not found the right fit yet. When we do, we will make it public. Statements may be made, but they don't represent the government. Various arguments are being brought forward, but this does not reveal the true situation. You mentioned that false news items are being broadcast regarding the restructuring process of Sri Lankan Airlines. Then what is the latest situation? Oh. What I mean by false news is that various organizations are making statements. The time has not come to make such statements. Minister Kabir Hashim's ministry will respond to it. However, as a government, we are yet to receive any details. The cabinet subcommittee is yet to receive any decision. So wait until it is made. One airline company held a media briefing recently stating that they bid for it. That is what I said. The company can make different statements. People who can't operate a bus are trying to operate air buses. What can we do? Views were expressed on the possibility of a foreign investor coming into Sri Lankan Airlines during an SLFP media briefing held today. Various views were expressed on this last week. There have been numerous requests regarding Sri Lankan Airlines. However, nothing has reached the cabinet yet. They are still in discussions. When this is finalized, then it will be sent to the cabinet. There we would discuss it. People can make various statements, but when it comes to the cabinet, we will debate it extensively. There have been occasions when we have rejected such decisions as well. I will state to you that as the Sri Lanka Freedom Party and the government, if there is any wrongdoing in this regard, 
we will work against it. Speaking at an event held in Colombo this afternoon, Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe spoke on the economic challenges Sri Lanka are poised to face in the near future and on the controversy surrounding the central bank bond transactions. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe was addressing the American Chamber of Commerce or AMCHAM at a luncheon titled Prime Minister Speaks 2017, which was attended by a number of key ministers and US embassy officials as well as other dignitaries. Last year was a tough one. And a lot of the work we did was below the radar. But it was necessary to stabilize the economy. There is pressure on the rupee. But we have to face it. We have a drought. And drought is going to create more pressure on the rupee. There are many other issues that we face. But as a result of the economic stabilization program, we can take the next step. One is to tackle our balance of payment problem. Second is to create employment. Both are interlinked. The Prime Minister also responded to questions raised during an interactive discussion on key issues of concern. The bond scam. Everyone thought, okay, done and dusted, it's gone. We're not going to discuss about it anymore. And then you appoint a committee. Then we think, done and dusted, we're not going to talk about it anymore. And then the COPE. We're thinking, done and dusted, we're not going to talk about it anymore. Debates. We're thinking, done and dusted, we're not going to talk about it anymore. And then you have the president appointing another committee. Oh my God, Mr. Prime Minister, just keeps coming. What's these happening? Are, these are democratic country. When the allegation was made, they went to the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court threw out the case. I appointed a committee and the committee said the transaction required further uh, investigation. Uh, thereafter, the court took it over. Actually, if the COPE had followed the Pitipana Committee report, we had finished it earlier. Unfortunately, the then chairman of the COPE went on a journey of his own. Uh, there was a new parliament. I had the option of appointing a member of the government as chairman of the COPE, knowing that this will be on. I said we'll have a member of the uh, opposition to chair it. And the COPE went into it. And all the members of the COPE gave a unanimous report. On the reasoning, there were differences of opinion. Some came as a footnote, but everyone agreed. And I said, as soon as that was uh, presented, I said, then we will ask, we'll fix a date for the um, debate in parliament. Now, this is what happens in a democracy. In addition to it, I sent it down to the AG and asked the AG what are the steps that should be taken. Don't communicate with me, communicate with the governor of the central bank. So he has communicated with the governor of the central bank. The governor of the central bank has made a uh, complaint to the police because uh, the, com the COPE report said to look at who are the officials, whether it's the former governor or anyone else, whether anyone is responsible and who is the authority that can take action. So I have done all that. In addition to it, uh, there are some, there may be other civil issues that arise and there is a need also, this has shown, the need for new laws. Minister Dasiri Jasekar says that measures have been taken against the company involved in the bond transaction. With the special order issued by the President, the Central Bank has already imposed a certain limit on them. They have imposed a certain amount they can invest. Last week, I saw that they were ready to sell some shares, but no one was willing to buy them. Why? Because of the current issue. Clearly, we are bound to the decision of the Commission to take that action ahead. <laughs> We can make decisions based on what is decided within three months. We cannot say anything now on what is being done. However, the measures required to recover the financial loss incurred through this are being carried out. That cannot be stopped. Leader of the National Unity Alliance, Asad Sali, convened a media briefing in Colombo today. There are three or four persons who engage in corrupt activities in this government. We will not mention names here because we have spoken about them earlier. If they are taken into custody, then all these issues will be solved.
The president appointed a presidential commission to investigate the bond scam. Minister Rajita and Malik made public statements that the president is aware of how the lands for the Horonatai factory were given. If he actually knew about it, then why would the president stop it? He stopped it with immediate effect. When such fraud is being committed through Minister Malik's ministry, the president stopped them as well. We said this before and we will say it again. All ministerial activities of Minister Malik should be investigated. That is where most of the corrupt activities take place. If the president obtained these details along with the details from the BOI on the number of investors who came in and the money that they brought in, we will be able to stop this fraud and corruption. Minister Patali Champikaranavaka made a startling revelation about another scam that took place under the previous regime. He made the comments on the Satana political program held last evening. Three shipments of coal were imported to the country without informing me. A certain company connected to one of the sons of the royal family sent a satellite into space. I was pressured to make the payments for that. I refused to make the payments and as a result of the tussle, I was transferred to another ministry. Who were the businessmen behind that? Was that fruitful to the nation? How was 460 million rupees released from the Ceylon Electricity Board for Coal in June 2013? Who reaped the benefits of that process? Did the coal shipment reach Sri Lanka? Yes, it would be better if you could probe into that. I was not in the ministry, so I am not aware of that. But as I am aware, even during the end of my tenure there, it was not paid. The plot of land in Dehivala, which belongs to Yoshita Rajpaksa's grandmother, Daisy Forest, was surveyed today. Court recently ordered the police FCID to survey the land and provide an evaluation of the land. Thereby, officers of the police FCID and survey department of Sri Lanka arrived at the location to inspect the plot of land. Although officials arrived at this plot of land once before to survey the land, the owners of the land were not present. This was reported to court and court later ordered the owners of the land to support the officials to survey the land. The energy meter manufacturing company in Bandaragama has resulted in an exchange of words between the government and the opposition. A massive propaganda campaign took place saying that an energy meter manufacturing company that will create many jobs was established in the Bandaragama electorate under the auspices of the Prime Minister. This is not a new factory. I am not sure who makes these deceptive claims. This factory was opened in 2008. It was Mr. Tudor Jaiwatna who was the organizer for the Bandaragama electorate. This is the photograph taken at the opening. Mr. Tudor Jaiwatna can be seen here. Former Prime Minister Ratna Siri Vikramanayaka was also there. This is the photograph of the Prime Minister and then Minister of Power John Sinu Ratna in 2008. It was a joint venture between a Chinese company and LECO and it was opened in 2008 as Anti Leco Metering Company Private Limited. This is not a new factory. You might recall what happened with the Volkswagen plant as well. Ajit P. Perera, the Deputy Minister of Power and Renewable Energy, who arrived to inspect the factory premises, said that MP Ala Peruma was invited for the inspection. <laughs> Yesterday, through the media, we invited MP Talas Alaha Piruma and the others in the joint opposition to come for an inspection. I also made a phone call and sent him a text message in this regard. We were hoping that he would come here. This is something new that we are stepping into. We have invited him and asked him to be here by 8. He had responded to me saying that he will not be able to come here. Uh, sorry, I won't be able to visit on the... Uh, mentioned it in other, in the here. Despite the absence of the MP, the Deputy Minister and his entourage inspected the factory. The foundation stone for this factory was placed on the 1st of January 2016. Minister Ranjit Siamvalapitya and myself have been working on this for the past year until the construction was complete. As you can see, we can start production here. MP Alha Perma has been deceived by someone. 
He was misinformed and made statements that caused harm to the engineers that designed this factory and Antel Eco Metering Company Private Limited. He invited me to this factory. I have visited this factory together with Mr. Tudor Jawatna. I did not visit the factory recently. I went there back in 2008. I had no reason to visit it. It was a busy day for me. The only desire I had was to rectify the wrong impression made towards this project. The factory was launched under this name on the 18th of July 2008. Our aim was to only emphasize on that. Today, Sri Lankan authorities announced there were no confirmed cases of Sri Lankans being affected or detained at JFK following U.S. President Donald Trump's executive order. Foreign Ministry spokesperson Mahish Nikolone tweeted that Sri Lankan missions in the U.S. have informed that there are no confirmed cases of Sri Lankans stranded at U.S. airports, adding that all missions are on alert and in touch with relevant U.S. authorities on this matter. In a separate tweet, Mahishi Nikolone affirms that Sri Lanka is not on the list of countries in the recent U.S. executive order. The U.S. Embassy in Colombo posted on Facebook as saying that Sri Lankans can continue to travel to the United States with a valid visa. However, it adds that for reasons of privacy, it cannot comment on individual visa cases. Information came to light of another sand record which is taking place not far from the Akaragama area in Divlapitir, which is already at the center of an illegal sand mining record. Paddy lands in the Dehiga Palama area, which falls under the purview of the Divlapitir Divisional Secretariat, are mostly filled with massive potholes rather than cultivations. Locals in the area charge that acts by sand racketeers has severely harmed the ecosystem in the area. <laughs> Around half an acre of a four-acre paddy land has been dug up. What happens is that all the water in the field gets drained into the holes. We submitted a letter to the AG in this regard. We have addressed countless amounts of letters. Now the officials of the Gambaha Geological Unit are speaking in support of them. Many of the water sources in the area have dried up as a result of sand racketeers using the water for their operations. Crocodiles which bask in the holes dug up in the fields by the racketeers have caused a threat to the locals. We are waiting anxiously with barrels in our hands expecting them to come with water any day. But there isn't a single drop of water in our tanks. Children run around and now crocodiles have come out of the water to bask in the sun. We are terrified. When we go looking for our children, we see the crocodiles on land. A lot of our water is being taken away because of this. Water is being brought to us by Bowser's. When inquired by the Dulapita Divisional Secretary, HLMS Herat, she said she would look into the matter as she was unaware of it. A decision has been reached to grant Sri Lankan citizenship to the organizing secretary of the Frontline Socialist Party, Kumar Gunratna. Addressing a media briefing in Colombo today, Politburo member of the party, Pubudu Jagura, notes that Gunratnam will now take steps to cancel his Australian citizenship. Minister S. B. Navinna has signed the necessary paperwork to grant Kumar Gunaratnam citizenship with effect from the 1st of February. The government informed us of this. Now the next task is to cancel the Australian citizenship and obtain ancestral citizenship in Sri Lanka. The citizenship will be finalized when the Australian citizenship is cancelled. All we have now is this letter from the government which states that they have agreed to provide citizenship to him. He will become a legal citizen when after we provide them with the written confirmation from Australia that his citizenship there has been cancelled. So we hope to take Kumar Gunaratnam to Australia and get this done as soon as possible. Kumar Gunaratnam was arrested on the 4th of November 2015 for violation of immigration and emigration laws. He was placed in prison following legal proceedings on the 31st of March 2016. On the 2nd of December, Kumar Gunratnam, who served out his prison sentence, left the Anradhapura prison. Minister of Justice Vijay Dasaraj Paksa has called for new research in the field of law. He was speaking at the inauguration of the Legal Research Institute of the Faculty of Law at the University of Colombo today. The inauguration was also graced by Attorney General Jayanta Jasuria and Secretary of Defence Karuna Sena Hetiyavachi. When it comes to sentences to be imposed by courts. There is no any guideline, no policy. For the same offence, 
two judges sitting on two different courts give two different judgments sentences it doesn't mean that we are insisting that one similar type of judgments to be given in each case it is not possible but when they do that there must be some understanding among the people who are watching on it that the court has done the court has followed the correct procedure one group of people or one category of people have been given special treatment and others have been discriminated if that kind of images comes in by looking at the judgments and orders passed by the court then people will lose the confidence sometimes when a accuse is taken to one court and the other accuse who has faces similar charges in the other court the one person is granted bail the other one other person is bail is refused human remains have been discovered during construction work on a new road opposite the borella cemetery A new road is being constructed by the Regional Road Development Authority in order to ease the congestion near the Devi Balika College Junction. Due to the construction of the road, workers have dug in some locations about a meter into the boundary of the cemetery. We were able to observe this afternoon human skeletal remains which were unearthed as a result of the construction work lying around. Deputy Minister Dr. Harsha De Silva arrived at the location while we were in the area. Gather these remains and give them a proper burial. Do not throw them into the garbage. As humans, we should not act in this manner. When inquired, the Regional Road Development Authority notes that based on the approval of the Colombo Municipal Council, the remains are being removed in an appropriate manner. However, An engineer at the location expressed concern that remains that were discovered in a mound of earth which was being flattened today could have been thrown away from a nearby funeral home. In sports news now, twin tons from 50 places and David Miller set South Africa up for a 121 win over Sri Lanka in their second ODI in Durban taking a 2-0 lead in the series. And with that we're up our prime time news for the news for steam I'm Sandro Ferdinando and I'm Azra Hasan take care and good night